So today we are looking at the scripts part two, and um, which includes all the scripts that I use to make my workflow more streamlined. Uh, today we'll be looking at, at a couple of scripts regarding specifically cameras and batch rendering them out. Uh, we have a small script which actually helps you select um, objects which has similar material on them. And also the final script will be converting objects to instances of each other. Um, like the last video, I have explained in detail of how to install the script and actually use the script. Uh, at any point you want to skip the installation part, I have added in chapters which will help you navigate through the video. Um, so let's just jump into it. So the next script we're looking at is the lock and unlock objects and cameras. I've got a link down in the description. If you click that, it'll take you to this uh, website. You can download the script from here. Uh, once you've downloaded it, what you need to do is basically go to scripting. Instead of running the script, you need to open the script. So if you hit, if you hit open, you can find the script there. Lock and unlock transform. So once you open it, it'll give you this window. What you need to do is basically just click here and do control A. And then what you can do is basically click and drag to create a custom button for it. Um, after that, uh, to make it more visible, what you can do is basically you can do right click edit button appearance. So either you can assign it um, a small icon or you can actually add text to it. So in my case, um, I'll write lock cams and then press OK and it just got updated. Um, so the way that you use it is basically at times it happens to me that um, I'm working on a scene. I've got like 10 different cameras um, and then I might actually just select the camera and then move it accidentally. So to avoid that, um, what you can do is basically once you've set all your cameras up, you can select all your cameras and you can just run this script and select lock. You might get an error at times, but it doesn't matter. It, it works perfectly fine. You, or you can just click that lock all cameras. Uh, what this will do is basically it will lock the camera. So even if you are in the viewport, you won't be able to move it. If I select that camera, it won't let me move. So uh, at any point, I do need to change the camera. What I can do is either if I want to change that camera, I'll select that camera. I'll run the script again. I'll just hit unlock. And now I should be able to move it around once again. If the camera angle is selected, I can just hit lock and that will prevent it from moving anymore. Okay, so the next script we're looking at is the camera manager tool. Um, I've got a link down in the description. So if you click that, it'll open this website. Um, you can find the link to download the script um, down here. So if you click that, um, it'll take you to this website. You can click download. It'll open the GitHub page and you can find the link down here. Download. Um, once you've downloaded the file, um, you'll get this uh, render tools underscore uh, render underscore tools one um, hag render tools. Um, what you need to do is basically same thing as before, go scripting, run script and just run that script, hag render tools. Uh, once you've done that, you can find the script and customize user interface. Um, you can go to tools and then you can find it in hag tools. It's just there. You can drag and drop it onto your toolbar. Next script that we're going to be looking at is the manage cameras script, um, which I used to use a lot. Um, it just helps me a lot when there are a lot of cameras in the scene. I just want to go through them really quickly. Just have a quick look. How does each camera look um, composition wise? Um, and if the aspect ratio needs to be corrected or anything in specific. Um, and it can be really tedious if you have to press C every time and uh, go to that uh, camera view. So um, in this case, um, I used to use basically this script manage camera, uh, which basically gives you a full list of all the cameras in the scene. Um, and the good thing about this is basically once you select the camera, uh, you can turn on your save frames and you can really quickly just jump 
through all the cameras one by one really quickly um and if you uh go to any specific camera and you feel like oh actually um i'm gonna try this um in uh, landscape mode so you can quickly change the aspect ratio to quickly have a look how does the camera look um or you can go with the portrait um aspect ratios um and it just works really well in just quickly browsing through all the cameras so the next script we're looking at is the batch camera render uh, i've got a link down in the description if you click that it'll open this website uh, you can find the download link for this script just at the bottom of the page just that one um, once you've downloaded the file you can go scripting run script batch camera render um, once you've um, done that um, you can find the script if you go to customize customize user interface uh, toolbars and it should be in s um, this one sergo and it's just there and you can drag it uh, drag and drop it onto your toolbar um, so uh, after that the um, other script um, which uh, helps um, with batch sending a lot of cameras uh, in the scene uh, rather than sending them off one by one or even using the 3 Studio Max's inbuilt uh, batch render um, system um, I use uh, this script which is called batch camera render um, once you start the script it'll basically give you a full list of all the cameras uh, in the scene um, and you can see all the properties of each camera uh, very clearly defined um, like what frames um, is that camera supposed to be rendering what resolution was the aspect ratio um, path or anything basically it, it's it's a long list um, so uh, if you want to do some quick renders um, or even for the final output um, you can do is basically uh, either you can uh, set each camera's resolution separately if you set up cameras um, which some of them are uh, in 0.7 ratio which which is a uh, portrait ratio or in 1.5 so you can set that uh, or select multiple cameras and just say actually these ones are in portrait format so you can lock these and all these ones uh, are in landscape um, then the next thing um, which can really speed up process is basically setting the output so with this script you don't need to set up outputs for each and every camera um, you can basically select all the cameras there so if I go down to the bottom um, and it basically down there it shows you the render output so I'll click file so um, all I need to do is basically write percentage camera name percentage um, what this does is basically uh, it takes the names of all the cameras uh, and saves the output according to those names so you don't have to save each camera separately um, so if you've got 100 cameras in your scene uh, you just need to name the cameras accordingly and then just write that at the end uh, in whatever file format you want to save them out to so if I do JPEG I'll just hit save all right quality that's fine and then as you can see the path got updated um, and each camera will be saved separately um, the next thing uh, this script can help you control is basically render elements so if you do want to save your render elements um, you can check enable elements and do um, you can you just have to basically open the path it'll open the last open path automatically and just select folder so it'll save all those under elements uh, in the same folder um, the next setting is um, so that's for V-Ray um, I'm personally just using Corona at this point I don't use V-Ray 
um but if any of you guys have any questions regarding vray let me know um if you do know how to use uh state sets um you can select for each camera um here so if you have to find any state set and if you want to use it you can select them here um if you want to preload any scripts or any specific thing that you have um in your workflow you can load them here so that's divided by it'll either run it before sending off each render before starting on the job or after each camera accordingly um and then uh if you use deadlines so basically this um again does support uh deadline support as well so if you've checked that and you've got your deadline set up you can basically just do these steps and then just hit render and it'll send all those renders to deadline okay so the next script we're looking at is the select by material um i've got a link down in the description if you click that it'll take you to this, to this website um you can download the script um just at the bottom of the page just that one once you've downloaded the file you'll get an mzp file um which you don't have to actually run through the scripting manager um what you need to do is basically just uh, drag and drop the file onto 3d max's viewport and it'll take a couple of seconds and it'll basically just install the script um once this is done um you can find the script if you go to customize customize user interface um toolbars and then you can find the script in 3d one this one and you can just drag and drop that it basically selects all the objects in the scene with the same material so if basically i want to select all the objects which has that material on it um basically previously you just have to click that and then this small icon appears select by material and basically highlights all those objects with those material on it and you hit select um so that's one way of doing it um but i feel like it um takes away um it's a bit slow as compared to the other script so the way that you use the other script is basically um you open up your material editor the same way uh, once you've got the material selected you just run the script and instead of opening that dialog box and showing you which object has that material applied it'll just select them and it's just a lot faster so the next script we're looking at is converting unique objects to instances of each other I've got a link down in the description below so if you click that it'll take you to this website um, the download file is down here at the bottom um, once you've downloaded the file what you can do is basically just go to max go scripting run script and then just run the file turn to instance and you can find the script if you go to customize customize user interface toolbars um, it should be down in miri tools miri tools and it's just there okay so the next script we're looking at is the turn to instance um it, it does help a lot when you're um in a situation where basically you've created copies of like even an object or a light or a camera and you realize that you didn't instance them like they're all copies of each other and uh you want to just make them uh an instance of each other so like in this case um i've basically created all these objects but just copying them and um if i edit one it doesn't get carried across onto the others which means they are copies of each other so what i need to do is basically just select them all run the script and then basically i need to select the base object which i want the others to inherit the properties of so in this case if i click this one so now they are all instance of each other so if i edit this one can see all of them are uh, being edited so now if I go ahead and make this a unique object I can edit this any way I like and after that I realize oh, I need to basically add the same values to all the other objects basically create instance again so I'll do the same I'll select them all turn to instance 
and get the properties of this box and see all the objects like again turn to instance and they took the properties off from that object that I clicked and now they are all instance again um, you can do the same thing with uh, cameras uh, and even lights so if let's say that's a unique camera targeted camera and I've got that focal length on it and I want all the other cameras to be the same focal length as this one so I'll do the same thing again select all the cameras in in my scene click turn to instance and then just click this one and as you can see that camera got updated as well and if I go back and if I change any properties um, it matches across onto the other camera same with the lights doesn't matter what type of lights you have in your scene i've got two plain rectangular lights there and one sphere if i want all of them to be sphere lights i'll do the same turn to instance and then that as my base object and as you can see all those lights became instance of each other um same thing again with shape i've got two different planes there i want both planes to be the same size and instance of each other select both run the script and then just click the main object um, it just helps um, a lot um, when you're um, making copies of different objects and you don't want to tweak each and every one of them separately so um, this is a handy little script so one last tip um, regarding using all these scripts because uh, at times you might download a script from a website um, or you found it uh, a while back and you've actually forgotten the website where you got it from uh, but you do still have the script file um, and you've run the script it's installed but you don't know where to find it or how to run it um, so uh, the way to find where the script is installed is basically what you do is, is you if you go scripting and if you go open script and if you click on any script it basically shows you the location where that script is installed so in this case if I now go customize user interface if I go tools bar so it says it's in category corona render so if I go toolbar category corona render and the name is manage C proxy display modes C proxy display modes and that's how you quickly find where that script is installed uh, and then you can basically just drag and drop to create um, a shortcut key for the script. I hope this video was helpful and you can make your workflows faster as well uh, so that you can actually focus on being a much better 3D artist. If there's anything you would like to see in the future videos, please don't forget to comment down below and um, I will see you guys in the next one.